Microsoft licensing Q&A for normal people and for service providers, 23rd of May, 2025, let's go. I have an important question related to out of support products and Splat terms and conditions. What happens when the customer wants to come to our data center with a bunch of old virtual machines with Windows Server 2003 and SQL Server 2005, they cannot be upgraded. Should we charge for new licenses considering that the products the customer is running have not been supported by Microsoft for a long time? That's a very good question. I assume we're talking about shared hardware in the service provider data center. And if that's the case, let's talk about these two products separately. Windows Server 2003, you probably will license your infrastructure with Windows Server Data Center through SPLA anyway. So any virtual machine based on Windows Server will be covered by those data center licenses that you assign at the host level. SQL Server, you actually have three options. The first is using SPLA. The second is bring your own license, but for that, the client needs to bring a license covered with software assurance. And if you don't have a license with software assurance, if they don't have a license with software assurance, then in that case, SPLA is your default. And the third option, but it might not work for SQL Server 2005, is Azure Arc. I'm not sure you can install SQL Server 2005 with an Azure Arc agent, but yeah, just check it. If you can, that's your third option. Most of the cases like this that we encounter end up being covered with SPLA. Now let's look at the other details. So yes, you will have to pay for a license again. When something is moved to a supply environment, if you don't have a license that you can bring, you have to start paying for it again. You can't have a perpetual license that you had on premise and bring it to a shared hosting infrastructure. Microsoft prohibits that. Yes, it's unfair, but it's Microsoft. But one of the most important bits of this question is actually related to the out of support products. So can you even bring out of support products to hosted environment? Yes, you can. You don't have to buy extended support. You can, but you don't have to. And as a SPLA provider, you always pay for the latest version of the product. SPLA is versionless. You pay for the latest version of the product, and therefore it doesn't matter whether that's Windows Server 2003 or SQL Server 2005 or any other version, because you're reporting a product that has no version. It doesn't matter. It's the same SPLA license. And yes, you can run any previous version. Moving on. Hi there, we're a SPLA provider and we deployed Hyper-V hosts. Currently we license them with Windows Server Data Center 2022. Please pay attention to that detail on the question. Do we have to also license the client service, mostly Server 2019 standard? If you license your hosts with SPLA licenses, then you don't need to license virtual machines because Windows Server Data Center at the host level gives you unlimited virtualization. You can deploy as many Windows Server machines on that host as you want, as, as it physically can cope with, and you don't need additional licenses. However, I specifically pointed at the version in this question, and something tells me that the author of the question means that the server is licensed with an OEM license. Why would otherwise they include the version? And in that case, you can't use an OEM license for hosting. Even if your server came with a pre-installed license with a sticker or some kind of a registration key, when you bought it from HP, Dell, or any other hardware manufacturer, you can't use that license. You have to pay for SPLA licenses for Windows Server Data Center for that host. OEM licenses are not allowed for hosting purposes. Hello, a customer has a remote desktop device, device calls on the enterprise agreement. Can we use bring your own license and take those device calls to our data center? Device RDS call does not have bring your own license rights. Only user calls may be brought to a service provider data center by a client. Simple question, simple answer, probably not what you expected, but it is what it is. We are a software vendor and provide hosting for our own business software platform only. So the author of the question has a platform that they developed themselves. We currently use the SPLA licenses for Windows Server and SQL Server standard. I think we could qualify for self-hosting. So yes, as long as it's your product, and as long as you don't provide access to Windows Server directly, even RDS access, especially when it's a web application, you can use volume licenses. You don't have to pay for SPLA. So SPLA becomes a choice for you. You may use volume licenses with software assurance for so-called self-hosting. There are a few more boxes to tick, but these are the basics.
obviously you have to tick all the boxes. But to summarize, if you have your own solution that you developed, that you own the rights for, there's a big chance that you qualify for self-hosting, which means volume licenses are not SPLA. You still have to pay for software assurance, but all in all, it will probably be cheaper than SPLA. Moving on. I would like to deploy a SQL server with an additional passive replica always on, but I don't understand what licenses are needed. You have two choices. If you have licenses with software assurance, passive replicas are free of charge. If you don't have licenses with software assurance, passive replicas require additional licenses. It's as simple as that. If you're a service provider, the passive replica discount applies to SPLA licenses as well. I want to confirm how SQL SALs work. As the core model doesn't require CALs, actually SALs, does the SQL SAL come with the base included or is there a base license that is needed? So unlike volume licensing, SPLA doesn't have the concept of base licenses or server licenses or instance licenses when you use SALs. It's a very simple choice between core licenses for SQL Server standard or SAL licenses for SQL Server standard. You either pay for cores or for users. SQL Server Enterprise is only license per core. And the same applies to SQL Server Web. SQL Server Web as well is only license per core. But there's a second part to that question. How do I go about adding the SALs to users in SPLA? There's no way. You need a formula to calculate which users have access to SQL Server. And it's very tricky with SQL Server. You actually have to understand what applications the users access, the applications that use SQL Server, and calculate how many users are authorized through security groups to run that application. But there's no assignment to a specific user unless you have specialized tools like Octopus Cloud or Spla Manager. There's no assignment per user. It's not about assignment, it's about calculation. Moving on. We have legacy SQL Server instances 2008, 2008 R2, 2012 on virtual hosts and need to know if we still need to purchase software assurance. My current understanding is that software assurance is required to allow mobility between hosts. And even though the SQL Server versions are no longer supported, however, ChatGPT has provided advice contrary to this. Your expert opinion would be appreciated. First of all, ditch ChatGPT. Stop using AI to ask licensing questions. 50% of the time, AI gives wrong answers. And you can't be half pregnant or slightly wrong in licensing. You have to be spot on, precise. It's licensing. It's a precise science. So please, please, by all means, don't use ChatGPT. But going back to the question, the author of this question talks about on-premises licensing. If you want virtual machines to move between hosts, they need to have license mobility rights. And those rights are granted by software assurance. With only one exception, SQL Server 2008. But please, by all means, find the old product terms. Find that page. Confirm my words and print it out. If somebody asks you, you need to have evidence. And trust me, auditors forgot about it. So those old versions, only the Enterprise Edition, only the Enterprise Edition, had license mobility rights in Server Farm, built in without requiring software assurance. For the rest of the SQL servers, you need software assurance. Another provider question, do you have a link to the latest end user license terms document? I see references to it all over the place, but not the actual document other than the 2013 version. The 2013 version is the last version of the EULT. Where do you find it? It should have been supplied to you by your SPLA reseller as a part of the SPLA package together with all the other multiple PDFs that you get when you sign the SPLA agreement. If you lost it, the best way to obtain it is to go back to your reseller and ask them to resend it to you. They should have it at hand. Another service provider question, do we need to report sales for service accounts, system accounts, and system admin accounts? It seems like a simple question. The answer is a bit complex because we have two types of accounts here. Service accounts and system accounts are non-person accounts and system admins are persons. So let's put them into different buckets. SPLA requires you to report a SAL per person. So if an account is not a person, a SAL is not required. However, if the account is a person, we have a difference between admins and non-admins. According to service provider use rights, system admins have one exception. 
you don't have to report when the server are your south if they only connect through the two concurrent remote administration connections. Two administrators concurrently using administration connections don't require when the server south. Only for the purposes of maintaining Microsoft products. If they maintain the third-party products installed there, Sage, SAP, they need to the sell, even if they're admins. But there's another exception for admins, which is 20 admins per data center can be excluded from every Microsoft product. Don't miss it. It's not in SPUR. It's in the SPLA agreement. A SQL Server question. I have purchased a 16-core SQL Server Enterprise with a SA license. I understand that I get Power BI report server free with it. It's not free, it's included. Now I want to install all my SQL services on one virtual machine and my Power BI report on another virtual machine. Am I allowed to do this? And if yes, will I be compliant? You will have to purchase an additional license for the second virtual machine. When you split components of SQL Server and bundled products like Power BI Server, you have to pay for each server, each operating system environment where you install those components. They can't be spread. I'm looking to understand a little more about Microsoft's rule changes announced in October 2022 when it comes to SPLA and the use of RDS sales with listed providers. It's coming. On the 1st of October 2025, in a few months from now, you will have to stop using any SPLA licenses from your agreement on listed providers. Of course, this applies only to service providers. We're talking about service providers that work in a scenario like they have a client and they provide a service to that client and to provide that service, they use, say, Amazon AWS. At the moment, some of the SPLA licenses may be brought to AWS from that service provider's SPLA. So if you're a service provider, you still can do that. But on the 1st of October, you have to stop doing that. And the problem is, is quite painful and, and it's big. So we're talking about hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars that would have to be rerouted somehow else. And Microsoft is not, is not bending on this. They haven't announced anything new. It's written in black and white, not only in service provider use rights, but also in all the new supply agreements signed after October 2022. It's one of the conditions in the agreement that from the 1st of October 2025, you can't take supply licenses to be used on listed providers, Amazon, Google, Alibaba, and even Microsoft Azure. And what they do about that deserves a separate video. And that's it for today. Thank you. And I'll see you soon on some Expert TV.